September 10th, 2001, 11.18 a.m. PDT, Los Angeles, California, pages 65 to 70. Of course it was so silly and just a big misunderstanding. Amy knew her parents weren't getting divorced. They had just, they had been bickering a lot lately, but wasn't that just stress over moving, selling the house, and trying to find something in Los Angeles they could afford? Sure, sometimes they argued over how much time Amy's mother was working, who didn't do the dishes, who left the milk out all night, but that would settle down. Lunch period was long past. It was almost 11.30, and now Amy was hungry, but she had to find her next class. The inside of the school looked like a maze of stucco walls, each hall exactly like the one she had just come down or turned around in and walked back the other way. The bell rang and the doors were all closed by the time she found the room number that was marked on her slip of paper. Her mother had been wrong about one thing. Missing school orientation was not a minor thing. Oh, sweetie, we can't fly to LA for the start of school and back for your cousin's bat mitzvah and back again a week later. It's not a big deal to start late. They don't do anything the first few days of school anyway. Writes to you? <clears throat> she looked at Amy's dad for confirmation, but he didn't give it. It's hard enough starting a new school, her father said. Missing the first few days won't help. Well, you're not helping, her mother said, and maybe her voice was getting a little louder. What do you want us to do? Fly back and forth? Who's going to pay for it? The flights alone would cost... Amy shook the memory out of her head and tried to concentrate on algebra. She was supposed to be taking a test for her math placement, a test everyone had taken last week. What did she care what two girls she didn't even know thought about her or her family? What could they know? Amy looked down at her test and then up at the rest of the kids sitting at their desks. There were some things that were the same as her old school. The desks, for instance. The desks were the same plasticky wood with metal with the metal frame and the chair attached. On the whiteboard in front of the room and the teacher, the teacher kind of looked like Mrs. Franklin from fourth grade. That was the year Amy's mom first started working. I'm terrified she confided in her daughter. Amy's mom had been trying on outfits for her interview and so far seven dresses, 10 shirts and three pairs of pants had landed on the floor. Various shoes, stockings and socks were scattered in between. You'll be great, Mom, Amy lay on her mother's big bed while her mom stood in front of the full-length mirror, this time in black slacks and a gray top. She held a pair of gold earrings up to the sides of her head. What do you think? Amy shook her head. Not those, she said. No, her mother put the earrings down on the dresser and picked up another pair. Let me in. Amy bounced off the bed. Usually, things went the other way around, with Amy trying something on and asking for her mother's approval. This was exciting. If this new job meant they would spend more time together like this, like two best friends, like two girlfriends, Amy was all for it. Her mom stripped off the top and tried on something else. I think I need to match the shoes to the jewelry, don't you? Yeah, maybe, Amy answered. In truth, Amy had no idea. Her mom was beautiful in no matter what she was wearing. And all those dresses and earrings looked pretty much the same. Her mom seemed to favor blacks and grays, sometimes browns or olives. She called them earth tones. She looked good in everything she put on. Amy picked a scarf from the ones hanging out of, on the inside of her mother's closet door. How about this? She held it out, instead of that necklace. Her mother took off the necklace and tied the loose scarf around her neck. It did look good. The material of the scarf had a bit of all the colors her mom was wearing and a little burst of purple that pulled it all together. Oh my goodness, Amy, it's perfect. You're a lifesaver. Her mom scooped her into her arms, scarf and all, and hugged her way too tight. But Amy remembered it as one of the happiest afternoons. They spent another half an hour cleaning up all the mess, hanging up shirts and dresses and refolding pants. And then they went down to make dinner together. Meatless tacos, Amy's favorite. And they might even have baked cookies that night. Yes, Amy was pretty sure they had. Oatmeal chocolate chip with raisins. How are you doing with that exam? The Mrs. Franklin lookalike was asking. Oh, Amy looked up. Fine, I guess. The teacher smiled and gave her that kind, it's okay if you're not the smartest kid in the class look. Maybe if Amy hadn't been such a fashion guru, her mom would have never gotten 
that job, and they would never have had to leave Chicago. And her mom wouldn't have to be away so much. She'd be home right now, so that when Amy got off the bus, she'd be there to hear it about every last second of her very first day of seventh grade. Or better yet, they'd still be in their old house. No new school, new teacher, new town, new kids, no impending divorce. No, just kidding. Either way, her mother would have remembered to pack Amy, pack Amy a snack before sending her off to school, as she was now most likely going to starve to death. How about you finish it tomorrow, the teacher said, reaching for the test paper. Amy was about to answer. She was about to say that, no, she could do it. It was easy math. She'd learned it last year, but her stomach spoke instead with a loud grumbling roar, and there was still a whole afternoon left of school.